So imagine yourself in a community where many of the members have been affected by some strange disease. Well, this is not just a myth as we visited an area in the Volta region where many of the members have found themselves in the position. Today's reporter intends to explore and find out how such affected people are surviving in the community with little or no external assistance. I am on my way to see my old-time friend at Atiteti, a remote community in the Volta region. From the look on her face, it is clear she has also missed me. Meet eight-year-old Aku. She has been suffering from Fraser syndrome. Fraser syndrome is a rare genetic disorder characterized by partial webbing of the fingers and toes, kidney abnormalities, genital malfunctioning, and in some cases, complete fusion of the eyelid that may be associated with malfunctioning of the eyes, causing blindness. In affected males, one or more testes may fail to descend into the scrotum. The urinary opening may also be abnormally placed on the underside of the penis, and the penis may also be abnormally small. Affected females may also have abnormal fallopian tubes, malfunctioning fallopian tubes, an abnormally enlarged clitoris, and abnormally shaped uterus. At her early stage of birth, Aku's mom abandoned the family by fleeing home to an unknown location after realizing the disease. Since then, the fate of Aku has been left in the hands of her busy fisherman father and her grandmother. Aba <laughs> Very, very sad situation here. What I hear from Aku's grandmother, that is Aku's um, paternal grandmother. She is telling me that when Aku was born and the mother realized that Aku had this problem with the eye, she told her mother-in-law that she was going to Anyangui market which is not too far from here she was going to the market and she'll be back and that was the end that was the last time they saw of Aku's mother meaning she ran away from her own daughter the Atiteti village looks abandoned as we saw no trace of development in the area for these villages however access to road and potable drinking water might not be their concern for now as they told me their immediate target is to farm and make ends meet for their family from our observation 
it was clear the level of poverty drawn in each one's face was obvious. As at the time we got there, the partially blind girl was dressed in a tattered clothes, an attire she says it's her favorite. The news team, through the effort of an NGO, managed to get her some second-hand clothes and her reaction was shocking. <laughs> <laughs> so delighted Aku, who couldn't express gratitude for the gesture due to shyness, rushed to inform her best friend to speak on her behalf. Meet Charles, a 15-year-old boy. He is also suffering from a severe version of autism. Charles' task was simple, just to thank us and leave. However, with the aid of signals, he was able to convince the team to constantly visit them to support other villagers. <coughs> 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 Charles, I'm right. This is Charles and then he lives in the same community as Aku. He's trying to communicate but he's having difficulty. No wonder he was the first port of call for Aku. Not long after this, my friend Aku rushed to other neighbors telling them about us. That was when I met Aku's cousin, Ego. Ego has a limp deficiency, making it difficult to walk in a balanced way. His left leg has no thigh, as the knee is rather located around the thigh area. Crossway definitely has difficulty in moving, but that does not break his spirit as he interacts daily with other children. <coughs> So you can actually see his knee on his uh, waist to say you have his knee on his waist. That is what we see over here. Six year old Ama, who is usually found loitering in the village partly naked, is also partially blind. It is about eight o'clock in the morning and time for Aku and her cousin Ego to rush to school. Both are in KG2 and as usual, Charles, her best friend, was around the school to protect these kids from public ridicule. The pupils are in class in their numbers today because they heard we are visiting them with our cameras. We combed the community and the numbers of people who had other diseases within this small attitative village was too much to be captured by one camera. I'm with Atru here and Atru is uh, one of the children that I found here with um, a sight impairment. Uh, Atru is telling me that uh, he was in hospital. Uh, she is the Koji. She is the Jeva, you know a chica chica for ku mega the kodia zo. Ah. Yeah, but the oba gamagal you. Yeah. Okay, so uh, he's been to hospital twice because the mother says she has no money to go back to hospital with Atru, and then Atru's father about fufu at the corner. I told you that. The father is a fisherman. Yeah, fufu anyanga bo chunji. I will not talk. Yeah, look at the my blina ba unkwa mala nukonyo. My blina. Yeah, look at blina. So uh, he says his father says when he has money he will send him back to hospital. But so now Achu has not been to hospital and Achu says he cannot see properly with that eye. 
Achu is not the only child in this condition. Nkodi. Courage. Courage. Um, Achu, open in the hall. Eleven. Achu is eleven years old. How old are you, Courage? Eleven. You are also eleven years old. Which class are you in? P two. And you? P three. Okay. And come, let me see. Uh, what's your name? My name is Sabina. Sabina, how old are you? I am ten years old. Which class are you in? P one. Nkwa heka kwe kwada nu heka ele nu pom. Aba heka. Heya kwe nu pom. Ka heya di. Heya mala nu pomo. Okay, so she's saying that it's only this eye that she can see with, and with this one she cannot see anything. And my my worry here is that this is Ghana's future. What are we really doing to make sure that these children have equal opportunities like other children? How can they match up? How how can they do it like other children are doing? This is sad uh, these children are limited and i feel it is a really sad situation but i think there is hope there is always a way out what can we do to restore their sight so that they can also learn like other children yes. oh my god <sighs> he just fell off Can we send him to the hospital? No, no, I can do that. Oh, the situation here is that the child has not eaten. He has eaten. Can we get some food? He has seen a lot coming to this um, community, and you all just saw a child collapse on camera just because the child is hungry, and uh, it's a sad situation here. I keep saying that we as individuals in society that can help what are we doing are we waiting for these issues to continue what is the future i keep saying what's the future of these children how do we guarantee a good future of these children if we really do not care about investing in their education and well-being there are people who can afford unfortunately they don't seem to care the assembly woman for the area beatrice kosoku attributed the problem to poverty and we just saw something that just happened this child that had a problem with the eye and we are thinking of what can be done and the child just collapsed and uh, one way we, we see the child of course the child is hungry but um, why should things like this be happening why are the children hungry is it poverty is it wh why why is this happening i can say it's poverty because the child is an orphan oh okay the mother is dead and he's living with auntie if the auntie can't get anything to him he cannot take anything if he, i learned the child is not well mm. but he's not he didn't go to clinic or hospital so that's why. So, uh, as, uh, as I'm uh, speaking now, we are fishermen and then fish muggers here. Mm -hmm. And the poverty is among the community. That's oh. why things happen like that. So, it means the community is so poor, so uh, uh, parents or guardians actually cannot afford hospital uh, bills, right? Most of us does not understand going to clinic or hospital. Okay. That's why. And then the community... Not so far from the Atitetic community, the new team identified Dopui. She is the 11th of the 12 children of her parents. Though she was born with this condition, Dopui, who had education at heart, used to trek to another village nearby for school. Unfortunately, she broke her left leg due to the long trekking, making it unbearable to walk. Through the benevolence of some people and NGOs, she was provided a wheelchair and a sewing machine to prepare her for the job market. Persons living with disability need special attention, but it appears such people fall short in areas like education and even on the job market as they have no option than to compete with their fellow people who don't really need any special attention, something 
many people argue as unfair. Reporting for TV Africa News, my name is Kweju Echampong.